guys, this is Crafty Cat. Welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new. We are here with a brand new video today, a different kind of video. It is a let's make it and also a crochet review and completion video. So I have been making bracelets. I've made this one and this one and this one. So I have been watching all kinds of YouTube videos on showing me how to make crocheted beaded bracelets. So this is the first one that I made and I followed a tutorial by a person called Unique Stitch Designs. It's just awesome tutorials if you want to watch. And I did this one um, following a tutorial by someone called Creation and You. And I will put the links below. Now, this bracelet that I did, I also did it with this one. So these are two of the same, but using different materials. For the white one, I used this white crochet um, cotton. And I can't remember who makes this one. But it's like the most common one that you find at Walmart and Michaels. And I just, I'm, I can't think of the name. If you want to make a doily or a, um, not a doily, a dish rag, a dishcloth. And this is a different brand of crochet cotton called Capri Echo Cotton, um, made from recycled cotton that I got at Michaels and it's by Loops and Thread. So now when I looked at these, I thought the white was thicker. So it's, I don't think it is. I think it just might be that the white looks bigger because it's a lighter color, but I'm not sure. But anyway, and for this one, I used a crochet thread. Um, let me see if I can find it. I do have it here. This kind of crochet thread right here. All right. So this was thinner than the other the other ones. I don't know if you could see that. But it's a little bit thinner. So this just is super easy to make, you guys. It's literally, you just need to know how to chain stitch and single crochet, and that's it. So this has just got one row down one side and one row down the other side. And this one here has two rows. So this one is basically this with an extra row to make it floopier. And I'll show you what they look like on. So this one has this kind of a tie where you can make it tighter and looser. And this one I just made my own. Now this one is supposed to have this kind of tie, but I found I didn't care for this kind of tie. So I just made up my own little tie just so I could slide it over my, my hand. And the same with this one. This one I didn't bother it with the extra, um, Oh, I got to just cut this. I didn't notice this. So anyway, this one here, I just sewed it all together. So that's how they look. All right. So we have blue and white, purple and purple, and the white and green. And I think out of all the ways I did them together, this one I'm having a hard time finding where I did it together. I think it's here because it's really fat here from where I sewed it in. I think I like the look of this one the best. Look at, what do you like best? Now this, this wrist is bigger than my other wrist and I made it to go on this one. This hand, if it's either that or because I'm right handed, it's easier to put on. I don't know. But these are a lot of fun, and they're really easy to make, and um, you can wear one or two or three, <laughs> and they're simple, and you just need pony beads from the dollar store, but you can use any kind of bead. It's just that I only had these kind of beads. I have some super small beads that don't fit on the yarn at all, so I couldn't use them, I've, but I did order some prettier beads. I'm just waiting for them to come in, So, but in the meantime... um. I thought maybe you'd like to keep me company while I make another one. So this is not a tutorial. If you want to see a tutorial, you're going to have to go and check out the links below. Um, so we're going, we're going to be doing one of these smaller ones today. 
And I haven't decided what kind of loop I want to put on the end, like to attach it, but definitely not the string kind. And we're using this new yarn because this new yarn has lots of different colors in it. So we did the purple first, and now there's still a, a lilac and a pink. And we just finished the purple and it's going into the pink. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this purple to string these beads. So you guys, basically all you do, and this to me is the hardest part, <laughs> is to get this crochet thread into the little needle. So you need a needle. This is a little darning needle. And then you're just going to string your beads on here. So I know that I need 17 for how tight our loose eye crochet and how big my wrist is. So I've already pre-counted 17 of these pony beads. And you can do them the way I'm doing them, or you could just do them like this. But I'm a bit of a klutz, and I have a hard time doing this. Let's see if I could do it. So... And it's really cool because I, I, uh, these pony beads are leftovers from when I did others. I think I made Christmas decorations out of beads and I used all the smaller ones. Not all of them. I still have tons of smaller ones. But I never used these and I had so many. And they're cute. They really are. But they're not quite round as you can see. They're like this, the size. They're, they're taller than they're fat. But they are cute, even though they're just like the cheap dollar store beads. But anyway, I thought this is a nice way to use them up. And I thought these are going to be really cute with my summer t-shirts for bike riding. And if I make the thicker ones, <laughs> because it's crochet cotton, it, it won't mind if I sweat into it. And you can wash it because these aren't real beads. They're easy to wash. You Because this is what you make dishcloths out of. So I thought, perfect. They, they're washable. So I thought it'd be fun to make a bunch of different colors. Anyway, after I have my beads on the end, I'm just going to take my needle off. And I have a special little treasure chest. I don't know when or where I bought this treasure chest. Dollar store, I guess. Yeah, Dollarama. But years ago, I've had this for years. And I bought this specifically to keep my um, stuff in. And, and these aren't pills. If you're wondering what these are, these are mints. Mmm, yummy. So I just threw those in because I needed my mint, my mint tin for pills for my purse. So there's not usually a bunch of mints thrown in here. But this is the only way I don't lose my darning needles. So now that I have these all on here, I'm just going to double this up so that I have two strands and then tie a knot. Just loosely though. And that way they'll hang. So you, it doesn't matter how much you leave on this end. This is just the end that you're going to be using to push your beads up. So you have this end here. Hang on. All right. That's the end with the beads. So you're not crocheting on that end. You're crocheting on this end. So you, basically I have it. So this is like kind of right next to my body. And this is just kind of off to the side, and I'll pull a little bit out. I've got a size 3 crochet hook. And I just want to make sure I'm into the pink. And I don't know if this is going to change colors or we'll get a lot of pink, but let's hope it stays pink. And I'm just going to make my slip knot. It doesn't matter where you make it. Um, you can make it closer to the beads if you want. I find it's easier to give myself a little bit more leeway because I'm really klutzy. Now, this isn't the nicest yarn because this yarn wants to separate into strands, and I, I absolutely hate when yarn does that. But I just bought this yarn, and I like the color, so I'm using it. So I made my slip knot, right? So now that's attached to the bead end, and this is attached to the ball end. And the lady who made this tutorial calls this the working yarn. Because this is the yarn we're working on. So this, you guys, is super simple. Now, I had to change the pattern because my beads are smaller than hers. She's using size 8 millimeter round beads. And I am using pony beads, which aren't round. So she chains 4 to start. I can't chain 4. 
I have to chain three. Um, if you have bigger beads, you can chain four or maybe even five if you have really big beads or six. But what you want is there's chain one, chain two, chain three. Okay? And then you just take one of the beads from the bead end and you slide it to the base of that chain three space. And then you use the, your thumb or your finger to hold it in place. And you're just going to single crochet behind the bead. And that single crochet is going to hold it in place. And then you tighten it a little bit. So that's made kind of like a little wrap around the top of the bead. So for the first one, you do three. And then for all the rest, you're just doing two. Oh, and look at, see how it's separating? I got to pull this out because it separated on me. And I didn't even notice. So this is tricky yarn. It's much easier if you use a yarn that doesn't separate on you. So then you just go one, two. Now in her pattern, she does three. Like I said, because she has big beads, but mine are small. So I have to do two. Bring up a bead. And one. And tighten it a little bit. See how it's just kind of holding it in place? So we're going to do that all the way up just one side. It's so simple. I'm so thankful for this lady. I don't know what her name is but at Unique Stitch Designs for making this because I love crocheting and I love trying new things and this is just so much fun and I love bright colors as you all know. So, and what's easier than one, two, pull up a bead and then single crochet. So you're basically just doing Chain two, pull up a bead, single crochet. Chain two, pull up a bead, single crochet. All the way to the end. And I already know that I need 17 beads for my wrist. You would have to measure how many you need. If you're not sure, it's easier to put, like, if you have bigger wrists than me, put more than 17. If you have smaller wrists than me, I would still say put at least 17 and because it's easy to take them off if you don't need them. It's also easy to add more if you need more. You, could ju you just thread the needle again at the other end and add more. So there's nothing really concerning about this. Isn't that pretty? I love pink, you guys. So what are you all working on? Let's see if I can, as my mother says, talk and chew gum at the same time. She says I can't. If I can talk to you and not lose count for one, two, one, we'll see if she's right or not. She might be right. I get distracted very easily. Ooh, there's my two, my bead, so normally when I crochet, this is always on here. I don't have to let it go to drop a bead. But because I'm just new to bead crochet, I'm having to let go to drop the, a bead. Um, there might be a way to hold some of the beads in your hand, maybe. So you don't have to let go of the other end. I don't know. But then you got to tighten it because you don't want it too loose. And when you tighten it, you don't want it too tight either. But you do want a little bit of a bump there. See that little bump? But you don't want it so much that it starts turning. So it's really hard to get the, um, for me, to get the tension just right. So one, two, and I got to grab some more yarn. Because it was getting stuck in my ball of yarn there. So I'm wondering if I'll have enough pink or if it's going to change colors. One, two, so what is the weather like where you are? Are you in the area where you were getting all the snow? I live in northern Ontario, Canada, so it's nothing weird for us to be getting snow at this time of year, and we did get a lot of snow, but um, that's normal for us this time of year. So I know a lot of you are getting snow where it's not normal for you. I saw that there was a blizzard effect in California. That is crazy. Now, I know some parts of California do have snow up on the mountains, but like my cousin is near San Francisco and she's in a blizzard warning. That's crazy. As I'm crocheting, 
as I'm doing this, like, I don't know when this will go out on the channel. So when this goes out on the channel, you might have beautiful spring weather. I hope you do. I have so much snow outside and I'm dying for spring, you guys. That's why I'm, I'm really into doing stuff with bright colors. It just reminds me of spring. And you know, I am really missing going for my walks along the, the, uh, the water, along the shoreline. One of my favorite things to do when I go for walks along the shore, depending on what beach I'm at. Um, if, I, if I'm at my beach at our cottage, it's a rocky beach. Like, really rocky, like, n no sand, except for sometimes when you go in the water, you might find a little spot with sand, but the whole shore is all, it's all stone. But my, since I was a little girl, I've loved to pick stones along the beach, and I've just been wanting to do it so badly. And uh, last night, I had a dream that I didn't live where I live, and it wasn't my camp. I don't know. It was this really big house, and I was living there with my parents in the dream. And we had just moved in, so I don't know if we won the lottery or what, but it was this big house near, near like a forested area and a beach on one end and a, like a little town down the road on the other end. So we were at the end near the beach and the forest, so kind of like a dead end. And it was just such a vivid, vivid dream. And it was such a nice house. I got up early in the dream to go for a walk. And watch the sunrise, which I normally only get up to watch the sunrise when I'm at camp. Other than that, I am not a morning person. I'm, unless it's like staying up till morning, I do that quite often. But the dream was so vivid. I got up, I made coffee, I went outside for a walk, and I was exploring all the new areas. And I, I love exploring the new areas. Oh, my mother's right. I can't walk and chew gum. I lost track of how many, um, chain stitches I put in there. One, two. Anyway, so I'm exploring this beautiful area on this beach, and the beach wasn't like my beach at camp. This beach had some sand and some stone. So I'm picking rocks, and I found this beautiful, big, like, big caramel cover, caramel color. You know, like, you eat caramels? Like, kind of that color quartz stone and it was round and smooth and oh it was so beautiful so that oh I've, I've got to carry this back to the house right away so I carried it back to the house and I was looking at it thinking it's so beautiful so then I put it down and I thought you know what I'm gonna walk into town and, and you know get myself another coffee I don't want to go back in the house it's too nice out and I haven't explored the town yet so I put my beautiful rock down on the stoop and uh, I went the other way I went down this really pretty road it was tree lined and I kept walking, and I got to this little town, and it had the most quaint shops in the world. They were like those red stone buildings, those old-fashioned red stone buildings. And I stopped, and I looked in this one store. It was like kind of a miscellaneous shop. I don't know, like a secondhand store maybe. I don't know. But with cool things like jewelry, and I don't know what kind of store it was, but I just was looking through the window because it wasn't open yet. And it was so cool, and then I, I passed other places, and then I came to this place called the Menagerie, and it was two-story. It was a, like that brownstone-y kind of brick again. And on the second story, there was a little bear trying to climb through the window, and then there was a moose trying to go through the front door, and there was a man outside bringing all these animals in. And I'm like, what kind of place is this? He says, it's the Menagerie. I said, you, you have a little black bear? He goes, yeah, yeah, he belongs here. I go, you have a baby moose? I said, I love me moose. And then there was a black poodle, and I used to have a black poodle. I'm like, oh, my God, and a poodle. And he goes, you're just as excited about the poodle as you are about the bear and the moose. I said, yes, I love poodles. So then the man says, well, you can't come in now. We're not open. I said, well, I really want to see the bear and the moose and the poodle. He said, well, you'll have to come back later. I said, okay. He says, listen, where, where are you going? I said, I'm going home. He says, I'll walk with you. So he starts walking with me, and then I look down, and all of a sudden, my book manuscript is under my arm. So... You guys, I wrote like three book manuscripts. I only published one book um, a long time ago, the children's book. But I have others that I've never published that I still need to edit and send them out. And I haven't done it. And I must have been thinking subconsciously, I really need to work on that and get it done. Because I told him, he goes, oh, can I read it? I said, oh, no, it's not ready. I still have to, this is just the first draft. I have to rewrite it, edit it, then find places to send it to. and probably get, you know, get rejected a million times and, Anyway, I don't know how this book manuscript suddenly appeared under my arm. 
So then he walked me a little bit away, and then, you know, dreams just changed. So I was, it just suddenly changed, and I was back in front of the, the big square house again. And um, and I looked down, and the manuscript was gone, but I had the big rock in my hand again. So I'm just turning this big stone over and just thinking, oh, it's so beautiful. And in real life, I want to buy myself a rock tumbler for my birthday this summer so that I could tumble rocks. So that must be on my mind. But anyway, when I woke up, I was looking for the rock, and I was so disappointed I didn't have that rock. It felt so real, and I could remember the menagerie. So this is the weird part. I googled the menagerie, and I found a place in Toronto called the menagerie that's a pet store that looks exactly, exactly like the building that I dreamed. So much that it freaked me out, except for it's just like a normal pet store. They don't have bears and, and you know, moose. Maybe they have poodles, I don't know. But <laughs> they definitely don't have bears and moose. And I thought, oh my God, this is, how did I dream this? All I could think was when I was a young girl, not a young girl, but a teenager and a young adult, I did live in Toronto. I went to Toronto for the first time when I was 18 years old to go to university and then I moved back there to teach in the Toronto area, but not quite Toronto for 10 years. But I didn't live in Toronto. I lived in Brampton and Mississauga, Etobicoke, but never Toronto. But I did go to Toronto a lot. So all I could think is I must have seen that building years ago. I haven't been in Toronto since I was in my 30s, and I'm in my late 50s now. I'll be 59 this summer. So all I could think is I must have seen that building in real life years ago. And for some reason, my subconscious plopped it into the dream. But I, it, I was just flabbergasted when I saw that it really existed because I have no recollection of ever having seen that pet store before, you know. So that was so bizarre. You guys ever have dreams that are so weird, but yet so realistic? Like, I was so sad when I woke up that I wasn't at that house with, near the beach in the forest and that I didn't have that big rock and that I couldn't go back and see the animals at the menagerie. Like, I was legit. I tried to go back to sleep and continue the dream, but that didn't work. I was awake. I'm like, oh, I hate that. And then I thought, it was my dream. Why didn't I let myself see the animals? I mean, it was just a dream. You would think... My dreaming self would say, well, you love animals. Let's go pet that bear. Let's go pet that moose and that poodle, you know? But no, and my dream was like, no, it's closed. You're going to come back later. Like, what the heck is that all about? So weird. But yeah, if you ever have weird, weird dreams that actually seem real, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear them. So this is the weirder side of Crafty Cat. <laughs> I think I might have pulled it too tight because it's starting to curve, but it has to curve around my wrist anyway, so that's okay. We are almost done this side. Only two more beads. You know what I hate about crochet is I have long hair and my hair, I shed worse than an Irish setter. And uh, I'm pretty sure I'm probably crocheting my hair into some of this. Thankfully, it's just for me. It's not a gift. Last bead. All right. So there we have it. We have half a bracelet. I'm just going to loosen it a little bit. See how the yarn is like, it separates? I just don't like that. Okay, so now that we're at the end, I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. In the tutorial, she chains four because she has bigger beads. But I need enough to go around. And now I'm going to go and single crochet right in the middle of that single crochet space. And that will like hold my bead into place. So... Let's do that again. Make sure I have it tight enough. I just got to pull up some more yarn. It's stuck inside. It's, uh, I don't know if you could see, it's all balled up. I hate when new yarn does that. Why would a brand new ball of yarn do this? Yay, there's no knot. Okay. So I'm just going to take this, um, and away. I just don't want it to get in the way here. 
and make sure I'm turning it the right way. So like I said, I'm going into that single crochet. I'm doing another single crochet. Oops. And chain two. This is much stretchier yarn than the other crochet cotton that I have. Yeah, I'm having an issue here. I want to go back and do that one again because I'm not liking it. Let me see if I can fix that. I don't know if I can. It just could be that it's so stretchy. I mean, I could go through the bottom, but that's not going to work. No, nope. it's just such a stretchy yarn. Okay. I can't do anything about that. So this yarn has much more flexibility than my white crochet um, cotton does. But it'll still work. So we're basically just making these little cages for the beads. I don't like how loose that one is. Nobody's going to look at it closely but me. No, you know what? Let me just go back. See, that's too loose. I got to tighten that one. It's going to bother me, and I'm so close. So I'm just going to go back to these ones. Yeah, these are just need to be pulled tighter. So now we have two again. Because, yeah, that's, we're right at the one, two. We're right close to the spot that was bothering me, so it's not a big deal to go back and redo it. I just didn't pull it tight enough or it loosened when I turned the corner, maybe. All right, so now we're going to go around the corner again. So one, two, three. And I have to hold this to get the tension right. Go around the corner and go between these two. Move this one out of the way without releasing the tension. Oh, hit the, hit the camera. Now it's officially my video, you guys. And single crochet. All right, that's better. So one, two, and now we're going to single crochet in that other single crochet right in the middle. And now we are where we were before. And let's see if that looks any better. Yeah. Pull it a little bit better. See, because these aren't perfectly round beads, they're not sitting as nicely as they should, but it's still going to be cute. One, two, single crochet, chain, chain, single crochet, chain, just checking to make sure we're still recording, chain, Ooh. No, see, this yarn keeps wanting to separate. Single crochet, chain, chain. So do you guys watch Grey's Anatomy? I've been watching Grey's Anatomy since it first came out. And I'm so sad that Meredith is leaving. I mean, she deserves to leave if that's what she wants to leave. The actress, she doesn't owe anyone anything after all those years. 
but it's just not going to be the same anymore. They're, all the originals are going to be gone, except for um, Bailey and the Chief. Um, I love them. Don't get me wrong. I love them very much. But all the originals interns are going to be gone. Meredith was the last original intern. So I'm hoping, I'm not doing a spoiler for anyone, I have not watched the most recent one. Um, it came out last night, but I always wait an extra day and then watch it on the computer so I don't have to watch as many um, of the ads. I watch it on Blue Curve. So I'm sad to watch it. I'll probably watch it tonight. I'll probably make some popcorn and watch it tonight. But I'm really sad to watch Meredith this last day. I do like the new interns that they have now, though. They're, they they seem good. They kind of remind me of the original interns. I don't know why, but they do. They probably meant to. But I really miss the beginning back in the... What was it? When did that show come out? In the 90s? When it was Meredith and uh, Christina and Izzy and George and Alex and Miranda <laughs> Bailey. I think I might be pulling it too tight now. One, two. So what are you guys all watching? Oh, and I started watching a new series. Um, what is it called? Sister something, sister something. It's about a mother and a daughter team that become detectives. Um, the mother is a mystery writer and the daughter was a cop. But then they decide that through circumstances that I don't want to get into in case you haven't watched it because it'll be spoiler city. But they start investigating things on their own. It's so much fun. And it's filmed in Canada. And uh, not very many things are filmed that I like are filmed in Canada. So I thought that was really cool. One, two. I'm at the end now, so I'm doing three. Three. And look, it's separated on me. i got to pull it up so I can... Get that last rung. Okay. And I just have to move my thing forward. And I'm going to do a slip stitch into this one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut this off, but leave a long enough end for sewing. Okay, and I'm going back into my treasure box to get one of my darning needles. I got to get rid of those mints. I mean, I guess technically I could leave it here. It's not going to go anywhere. So I'm just going to go in here and get two more pink ones. I have two more at least, maybe three. What I want is for this needle to be in the middle here. So I'm just going to move the needle here, and now I'm going to string these two on, and let's see how big that is. I'm just going to put it through here for now. See if I need to add one more or not. So just want to see if I can get this over my wrist. I can. I'm going to smash my hand into the camera. I can, and there is a little bit of space here. Yeah, that's going to work. I think that'll work. So basically, I'm just going to sew these in. I'm going to go this way. And 
and I'm going to go up more. Am I off the camera? I'm sorry. I was off the camera for a second. I'm just sewing in the ends. So. Now I'm going to come across this way. Mm. I think I pulled it too tight. I might have pulled it too tight. Let me just play with this for a minute, you guys. It's hard to do for me, the sewing part far away from my face. I usually have to hold this really close to see what I'm doing. I'm just going through the whole thing again. I just don't want to get this piece stuck. I'm just gonna try it on one more time. It's a little bit tight, but this this will get looser because it's got a lot of flexibility. I'll just make sure we're still recording here. Okay, yeah, it's good. So I'm just gonna go. Back this way. And I'm just gonna, I came out on this one. So I'm gonna go up on the one earlier to lock it in. And now I'm just gonna go up this way. And come back down this way. These are gonna be at the back, so it's okay if they're a little bit wonky. I just rather have it a little bit wonky than have this come loose. And now I'm just going to cut this end. And I am going to undo my knot if I can. And I don't need this much. It's too much yarn. So I'm just going to cut it off. I'm going to thread this on. Got a hair stuck there. Yeah, this is not great. But I'm going to go through this way. And I think I'm going to go down this side. And it came out here, so I'm going to go in one closer. Go through those two beads again. I'm going to come out way up here. I'm just going right down the middle of all those beads. Try not to pull it out of shape. But like I said, these will be at the back of my wrist, so it really won't matter. And we're getting into the purple now. I gotta lock this one in place, so I'm not going there. I'm going right here. I'm just gonna go back through these beads all the way down to this side. Here's where having a longer needle would be good. And I'm just gonna cut that close to the bead, and hopefully, it will just go hide under that bead. If I pull that end a little bit, there. So, 
I got to quickly take my needle and put it away before I lose it. I'm getting OCD about the needle. My mint needle. <laughs> and there we have it. We have a pink bracelet. And I do like this clasp. I like the way it looks. I think it's pretty. And I like that I can just put it, I hope I can just put it over my wrist. And these do stretch because they're it's cotton. Yeah. What do you think of my little pink bracelet? Pink on pink. This would have looked pretty with pink and white too. Or you can alternate colors. You could go pink, white, pink, white. Or you could do multicolors. You could do whatever you want. But I think these are so cute. They're going to be so cute for spring and summer. I have a few tops that are in this color exactly. And they're going to match perfectly. Um, Yeah. And it just gives me a little bit of color. So let's take a look at all of them. Shall we? And what's cool about this yarn is it gives you enough color of one color to finish a bracelet. So we, we got one of the... Uh, oh, I hit the camera again. Sorry. So we got the purple bracelet from this yarn and the pink, the hot pink bracelet from this yarn. And we can still do a lilac. So I'm going to get three different colored bracelets from one yarn, which is great. So I didn't have to buy three different kinds of yarn because normally I would have to. I hit the camera again. So I think that is so cool. And I really, I like this style. So what do you like better? Do you like this kind of closure where it fits over your hand? But it has the little, I like those two beads. I've, I think it looks pretty. It gives it like a different kind of look. Or then there's this, but it looks kind of wonky once you sew it in. Where you just kind of sew it in. So the beads go almost all the way around. And I'm sure if you're better at sewing in ends, you won't get that fat area. That's just me for not sewing it in right. But it will be behind my wrist, so it won't matter. And then these are all the same style. These are all from Unique Stitch Designs on YouTube. But I had to adapt the pattern because my beads are too small. So on hers, she does chain three and then single crochet chain three, and then single crochet, and I had to do chain two, then single crochet, and at the ends, it's a chain three, and hers at the ends, it was a chain four, so she did like chain four, chain four, I had to do chain three at the end, but the whole pattern for the rest of it, chain two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, I, I do like that look a lot, I think it's cute, you can mix the colors together, and there's this one too, and that's a different pattern. But these normally would have this closure here. But I don't really care for this closure, even though it's cute. And that's probably just user error on my part. I don't know how to tie on the beads. Like, I know I could put my needle down here and go one, two, three. But then that makes it look really thick and ugly. So I don't know. If you know how to tie these off and make them look nice, let me know. Because if I cut this here, the bead just falls off. But the wider look is pretty, too. So, you guys, we have... These are the yarns we've used so far. I still have a bead on there. I wanted to test if one of these size beads fit on this, and it does. But see how much smaller they are? So, anyway, three balls of yarn four different bracelets and you can just get endless kinds of bracelets so let me know which one you like best the pink one the white one the uh, purple one or the blue one all right guys i'm going to change hands for a second thank you for watching i hope you like this if you did, please give me a thumbs up, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, all those good things. Thank you for keeping me company while I crocheted. Let me know if you'd like to see me make a big one with you. Um, follow the tutorial. It's much better. I'm not doing tutorials. I'm following tutorials. But um, yeah, so let me know if you want me to do another one of these. And when my good beads come in, I will do a different one with, with the good beads. But I think the pony beads look really, really cute. I mean, how can you go wrong? They're adorable.
All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for keeping me company. Um, take care. Stay safe. Bye for now. Oh, and happy crafting. Bye.